to talk about the five reasons why real estate agents fail. Mm, which, you know, it's a common thing, right? I mean, there's totally. people who get into the business thinking, ah, I'm going to go ahead and crush this. And then they end up hanging up their hats. Well, it, and frankly, it's not just real estate agents that fail based upon these five reasons. I think really it's, it's business in general. And, and you think about it and you go, oh, what do you, what do you mean business in general? Business is different. But really, it's not. What's different is the marketplace, the product, and the customer. But business structurally is very similar. So these things uh, really transcend life, transcend business, and will help people kind of take a, a reflective approach to their business or what they do and, and figure out, do I have any gaps? Hmm. Well, what are those five things? Well, let's get into those, Mark. <laughs> And you're smiling again. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just easy to smile. It is, yes. And it's funny you can, you can kind of hear your smile through the microphone. But, um, so the first thing is no system. Mm. So, which is like the beginning of anything, right? Yeah. You need to have a system. You gotta have a plan, okay? And 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 your plan really defines your system. So, you know, if if your plan is to go sell houses, what's the system that gets you there? Mm. And and that system. Uh, you know, we'll probably be, um, go find customers, create some value and deliver to those customers, things like that. But really it, it, you gotta have a system and going and finding customers, it breaks down into a system of what, how many times a day, what am I going to do? What are my activities? Um, how am I measuring those activities? Things like that. And ultimately people say, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go sell houses. But if they don't have a system to do it, you might get lucky with, you know, selling a house to your, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your parents, whatever it might be, you know, the, the first people that anyone typically goes after when they start a business, which is friends and family. And then, you know, they accidentally find somebody on occasion, but ultimately you can't run your system or your business by accident. Mm. Does that yeah. make sense? Totally makes sense. Totally so, makes sense. So number one, number one system, have a system, buddy. All right. Have a system. It's like the system of wires and stuff we have here for our podcast. That's right. We we have a system of how it all works. We got a system, man. So that we can record the show. That's right. It just doesn't happen by accident, right? That's right. So all right. How about number two? Number, number two. two. So you you might have a system, you might have some goals, things like that, but do you have accountability? So number one, no system. Number two, no accountability. Mm. That's really powerful. I mean, with anything in life, accountability helps you follow through with your system. Right. Okay. So you, you have your system. Let's talk about accountability here. Yeah. And r really ultimately what you have to do is you have to decide to be accountable to yourself. Uh, and let's compare a entrepreneur to an employee, for instance, an employee has accountability, right? They, mm -hmm. they have to show up at the office by 8 AM, let's say, and then they have to go to their desk and they have to do certain things, or maybe they're in a service industry where they stand at a counter and wait on people, or maybe they're in um, an industry where they go and they, they perform some sort of a manual task, maybe factory worker, maybe, you know, they're, maybe they're building a house and they're a carpenter or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. but you're accountable to somebody generally in life, unless you work for yourself. Mm. And, that's one of the, you know, real estate agents work for themselves generally. So who are they accountable to? Themselves. Themselves. So, I mean, you ultimately, you first have to be accountable to yourself. And a lot of people go, well, I can get a coach and be accountable to them. Well, can you? Because a coach doesn't necessarily create your accountability. A coach helps you reflect on your accountability and they figure out where your benchmark is. If you're going to perform at a level of three, the coach's job is to get you to outperform what you think you can do through increasing that accountability. I'm going to get you to perform at a four or five mark, not a three. Hmm. And you go, Oh, how are you going to do that? Well, accountability, but you have to be ultimately accountability starts with yourself before you allow anybody else to hold you accountable. You gotta be strong enough to do it yourself. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. So what do you think are some things that people can do in order to hold themselves accountable or, you know, get that accountability? Great question. So a lot, I mean, we, we have to, we have to hold ourselves accountable through some sort of a leverage and a lot of leverage in holding people, holding ourselves accountable is through kind of a personal embarrassment, if you will. So for instance, let's say you 
want to get out of bed at 5 a.m. And you want to hold yourself accountable to not pushing the snooze button. A good way you might do that is put a note on your alarm clock or your phone or whatever is going to wake you up at 5 a.m. that says, don't push the snooze button, lazy, or something like that. So you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're basically holding yourself accountable to create that accountability. And that typically happens through some sort of a, some level of embarrassment mm. that, uh, because I mean, you're not going to, you know, reach up and smack yourself, right? You're not going to go, you dummy and slap yourself across the face. I'm holding you accountable and you're not going to go and, um, you know, I don't know, make yourself do 20 pushups. I don't, I don't know. But ultimately, typically you hold yourself accountable through this personal level of embarrassment where you you're down on yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's got to start is you have to be willing to hold yourself accountable. And that turns into a, a habit where you don't have to hold yourself accountable to get up at 5 a.m. Then it's you're used to it. And typically mm -hmm. it takes about 66 days for a habit to form. That's kind of the latest through uh, like James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, which yep. highly recommend that book. He talks about 66 days. It just so happens that 66 days passed us in this year, not too long ago. Mm. So we, we had 66 days, I don't know, a week, week and a half ago. And I think it was closer to a week and a half ago. But ultimately it boiled down to, can you hold yourself accountable to begin with? Yeah. And then you can probably get a coach to help up your performance. But I truly believe there has to be a level of personal accountability because your coach, it's like when you see somebody at the gym and they have a trainer, but they're standing there talking on their phone or talking to their buddy or whatever. And the trainer's sitting there kind of twiddling their thumbs going, do, 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 or, you know, you're, you're paying me to be here. Right. I'll, I'll either help you work out or I won't, but you're still paying me. Yeah. One of the things that I always, um, like when my alarm goes off at 5am and I'm, I'm feeling like not waking up or, you know, not going to the gym or something like that, there's the thought that always comes in my head is who do I want to become? You know, so when the alarm goes off, I'm like, who do I want to become? And then I get out of bed. Well, that's a good question. I mean, do you have, do you have like a, a choice? Yeah. You got three choices. Okay. Who are, who are the, <laughs> what are those choices? Well, you know, you can either choose to move forward. Yeah. Choose to go back or choose to do nothing. Right. I think and we've, we've talked about that before. We have. Yes. You've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things like you can stay who you are or you can become something better. Correct. And so when I ask myself, who do I want to become? Well, it's, I, I don't want to stay where I'm at. Right. So, you know, it's interesting in business, staying where you are is actually moving backwards. Mm. So, you know, you, you've always got this, this theory that, um, if you do today, what you did yesterday, Tomorrow you'll get nothing more than you got today. Oh, it's a tongue twister. Okay. So, I mean, does that make sense though? Yeah, totally. But ultimately, if you look at tomorrow compared to yesterday, it costs more to live tomorrow than it did yesterday. You're older tomorrow than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. you're, you're probably not in better shape tomorrow than you were yesterday. So if you don't do something today that's better than yesterday, if you're not trying to be better every day, and that's a, that's a saying of my friend Darren Hardy, better every day. Mm -hmm. If you're not trying to be better every day, you're going to get worse. Mm. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a maintain. Yeah. I really don't. I'm I'm a true believer that there's no maintain. It's either get better or get worse. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So All right, well moving on. So we got the reasons why real estate agents fail, no systems, no accountability. Yep. Number three. Number three, just watching. Just watching. Yes. From the sidelines. From the side. Yeah. I mean, you took the field, you got the jersey on, but you're not <laughs> in the game, buddy. So uh, we, we see this a lot in life. In fact, it, it was interesting. I spoke at a social media mastery class this morning that uh, one of our amazing offices is putting on here in Denver. And... I asked the question is, what is mastery? And everybody kind of looked at me. Mastery really is the execution of habits over time. And I don't mean just trying, it's doing. You're not watching on social media. I said, what happens if you go to a social media class and you go, all right, I'm going to go work on Facebook. And you sit there and you, 
you hit the uh, the news feed and you start scrolling through and you're like, all right, I'm doing Facebook. You're not doing anything. You're just watching. Mm. So what are you watching or are you doing? So let's break that down a little bit. Let's say you want to do social media on Facebook. What do you do? Do you scroll through and go, all right, I'm going to like a few things. That's not doing social media either. That's not marketing your business through social media. How about creating an ad on Facebook? That's marketing on social media. Mm -hmm. Give somebody some place to go that creates uh, an addition to your customer list, your customer base that is using social media to grow your business. Or something else you could be doing is looking for your customers on social media. So you're not watching, you're, you're doing by researching your customers. And what do you do when you find them? You figure out what their, uh, their likes are, you know, what, what are they enjoying? Mm -hmm. What are their challenges? What are they talking about? And then you know what you do? You reach out and you talk to them. That's doing, that's not watching, that's doing because you're, you're communicating, you're touching your customer. Watching, um, I'm on Facebook. That's like when, uh, you know, when we see people that are recruiting to their business, recruiting people, recruiting customers, to their business, what are you doing? I'm working on my social media. No, you're not. You're on the Twitter feed or you're on Instagram looking at pictures, right? That's not recruiting your business. Reach out and talk to these people, do something with it instead of just watching. Get and off the sideline. That's it. Get off the sideline, get in the game and touch the ball and score some points. Right? Got it. So fourth thing. Well, first, let's review the first three. Okay. No system. No system. Yeah. I got nothing. No accountability. I don't care if I do anything. Just watching. I'm really not doing. <laughs> the fourth one is no follow-up. Did you know the majority of business is done as repeat and a referral business? I did not know that. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. A great deal of the real estate industry is done by repeat and referral business. Why would you go look for new customers in a, in a, a manner that you got to go out and talk to people cold when you can call people, you know, and say, Hey, Mark, it's Adam. Um, you know, a few hundred people. Do you happen to know anybody that I could contact that would possibly be interested in buying or selling a house? You've just accomplished two things. One, they might know somebody. They may have talked to somebody Two, you've got them thinking about buying or selling a house yourself. Mm. So, couple of things you've just impacted there. And also you might ask him and you know, Mark, I never asked you to do this last time we did a transaction together, but I'm putting together some reviews, some online reviews. If I send you a link, would you mind giving me a Facebook and a Google review and, and a Yelp review for that matter on the service that I, uh, that I provided you when I uh, helped you buy your house. And now you've got somebody invested in yeah. you doing something. So, but, so you're following up, you're, you're continuing to keep that, that fire burning in your business. Yeah. I know one of our agents, um, you know, they send us stuff in the mail, like buy one, get one free pizzas for the family or things like that, you know, or even something simple like the, uh, the Broncos, uh, schedule, you know, I get that on my fridge and then they get their faces right there all the time. And I'm always thinking about like, who's playing today. And then it's like, Oh, there's my agent. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And you put it, you show up and you're like, oh, hey, agent, <laughs> how are you? Who are the Broncos playing today? Yeah, exactly. Or this weekend or whatever. Yeah, but, but following up, I mean, and you know, they say it's, it's easier, uh, the easiest customer to have is the one you already have, or the easiest customer to keep is the one you already have or something like that. Yep, exactly. Yeah. But, and, and I would say follow up, be a human. Mm -hmm. Don't be impersonal. Don't say, I would appreciate any referral that you might have for me. I mean, you're going to kind of look at me and go, did you just read that to me? Is right. It, is that a script? I, instead I might call you up and go, Hey buddy, it's Adam. How's it going? Oh good. Hey, just want to touch base with you. I'm sitting here going through my favorite people list and you're one of them. And I just wanted to, to call and say, Hey, thank you for everything you do. And if you, you know, just a favor, if you happen to know somebody that is interested in doing that, would you mind making me the first person you mentioned to him, please. And be like, Oh, okay, cool. You know, grab a little commitment. Yeah. Because if you, if you say, I'll send them to you, Adam, the chances are a lot higher. You're going to send them to me than if I don't ask you to answer that question. Does that make sense? Yes. You've committed. Got the commitment. That's it. Yeah. We, we like to make commitments in life and we like to follow through on them. 
Yeah. It's satisfying. It's so. marking something off your list. That's it. So the number five reason why agents fail. The fifth reason. The fifth reason. The fifth of five. The fifth of five. Five of five here. No value. No value. No value. So yeah. if I'm gonna talk to you, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna deliver things to the marketplace, I'm not necessarily just gonna say Adam Cantos with Remax. Because that's not necessarily valuable to people. What's mm -hmm. valuable What's valuable to people is me helping them with their challenges. Everybody wants you to solve their problems for them. Or what might be valuable is me notifying them of one of the challenges that, the challenges that they face that they don't know about that I can then help them with. Mm. So I'm either going to identify something that they're aware of as a challenge, such as, Mark, you're probably wondering, um, you know, where are interest rates going with the current, you know, the Fed's idea of where they should go, the the mortgage industry, the real estate market, things like that, and how that affects the value of your home. And you you may or may not have been thinking about that. Or maybe, maybe you're thinking about taxes this time of year. Hey, when's a good time to buy and sell your houses with respect to taxes? Anytime. I mean, you need to be thinking about the value of your house constantly and what your mortgage payments are and where they're at. And how does that affect your taxes? You need to talk to your tax person about that. But ultimately, I want you to know that I'm here to help you with that as well from the real estate side, if mm. you're kind of wondering. And you might go, oh, okay. What do you need to tell me? This is where I deliver my value. Or, you know, you mentioned the Broncos schedule. If you're a huge Broncos fan, I might want to be the very first person to deliver to you. Hey, Mark, the Broncos schedule is out. And you yeah. might go, oh, cool, thanks. Oh, by the way, they're playing your least favorite team on September 10th and you might go, Oh, right on. Oh, by the way, I just bought their Jersey. So we're going to have a little competition, buddy. <laughs> I, I mean, just, right. you know, just stir the pot or create some value or whatever, or maybe I send you, um, the schedule, uh, taped to a football. Mm. Are you going to remember that more than me sending you their schedule? Totally. Absolutely. So.